goodness comes in Kimungo Ukumbozi, Kimungo Ukumbozi, Kimungo Ukumbozi, divine liberty, divine liberation, divine freedom, and all that that will bring for African people wherever we happen to be on the face of this earth. Karibu, welcome. My name is Quendi, and today we're going to get into another important subject, and that subject is Garveyism and the Structure of Liberty, Part 3, Order of Self-Governance. This is the third video in a series sharing with you the words of Marcus Garvey in relation to the structure of liberty, which has been creatively restored. You can see a basic outline of the overall structure from part one of the series. So this is the third part. And in this, we're going to look at Garvey's words in relation to the element of that framework called the order of self-governance. So let us get into straight away then the words of Marcus Garvey in relation to this very important area. He says, as a people, we can expect very little from the efforts of present day statesmen of other races in that their plans as far as advantages to be derived therefrom are concerned, are laid only in the interest of their own people and not in the interest of Africans. Hence, it is imperative that Africans as a people evolve just at this time a statesmanship sufficiently able to cope with the designs and movements that are being made. So this is a call of Garvey. And remember, these are words from the upper part of the so-called 20th century, calling on that self-determined substance that African people have held since the very beginning. To lead themselves, to have uh, order for themselves. And he gets a little bit more specific and detailed in the uh, following uh, quotation. Oh, just be aware that some of the words may have been altered uh, to express preferred language in this time. So with that in mind, he says the following. Rise to the intelligence of efficiency and self-determination and discover yourselves as a capable people, a self-reliant race, determined to use your latent powers for your own progress and your own development. And you start out sincerely and honestly to do it. I believe, he says, that in another 35 to 55 years, you may become leaders of this civilization. You have the potential. You have the vast continent Africa. You have the scattered millions of our race in all the countries of the world coming in contact with science and technical mechanical devices. You have the chance. All you want is the will to do and dare others to stop you. This is my hope for you. And this is the fear others have for you. That is why they watch you so carefully that you may not get away with any progressive ideas, which would be a surprise to the world of theirs. Probably, that is why I am dubbed a dangerous man. Because I attempt to lead my race to progress, to a consciousness of its power, from backwardness to usefulness for itself. And who is to tell what this may lead to? 
a shifting of power, a shifting of position. The man lowest down will rotate to the top position. It is the will of the creator supreme because the African man is not vindictive, but benevolent and kind. And the world will be a better place for all to live in and enjoy. These are the words of Marcus Garvey and powerful they are indeed. Prophetic they are indeed. And challenging they are indeed. Can African souls in this time, in the here and now, heed these words and rise to that challenge? Let's move on. He says, in a world of wolves, one should go armed. And one of the most powerful defensive weapons within the reach of Africans is the practice of race first in all parts of the world. He's highlighting the tools, the formulation of what Africans can engage in to be victorious, to victoriously ascend. And what he's describing is one of the key elements of Garveyism itself. Continuing on, he says, we are determined to solve our own problem by redeeming our fatherland and motherland Africa from the hands of alien exploiters and found there a government, a nation of our own, strong enough to lend protection to the members of our race scattered all over the world and to compel the respect of the nations and races on the earth. The supreme visionary Marcus Garvey inspired multitudes of millions of African souls throughout the world to become their true and natural selves, restore natural order in the world and bring about the natural oneness that African souls have whether in the Americas, whether in the islands, whether in the spheres of Europe, in Africa itself, further east of Africa, wherever Africans are in the world. Africans hold a strength unto themselves, a power unto themselves. And Garvey sought to make that manifest in its most magnificent form. So we, that food for thought, and surely it is food for thought. Kimunga Ukumbozi, Kimunga Ukumbozi, Kimunga Ukumbozi, divine liberty, divine liberation, divine freedom, and all that that will bring for African people wherever we happen to be on the face of this earth.